Georgia had their spring game yesterday, the G-Day ending in a 20-20 tie between red and black, but it's 11-11 football. They're playing football betwixt the hedges. What was what, what, what can we take away from seeing an 11-11 football game uh, and seeing this 2024 campaign get rolling for the dogs? Good to see some new faces make an impact. Good to see the defense do some exciting things, but what can we take away from practice number 15 of the spring for Georgia? We'll talk about it right now. Georgia fans, make sure you're subscribed right here, okay? If you've just now found the On3 YouTube channel, you just now found the show, The Hard Count, or you've been rocking with us here for a long time, we're glad to have you all a part of it. If you can't tell, the fact that we're reacting to a spring game on a Sunday morning makes us uh, a little bit of a, of a sicko for this whole operation. The fact that you're tuned in to a spring game reaction means that you're also a college football junkie, so... You know, we deserve each other is what I'm trying to tell you here. Make sure you're locked in here. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a minute of what we got going here covering this beautiful sport that is, of course, college football. Also, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at J.D. Piquel. I want to make sure we say this very clearly at the top. A spring game is not always indicative of what happened during spring football. Now, during this spring game, the defense, I believe, had the best showing. I think most folks that watched the spring game would tell you the defense had the best showing. Going into this, if you had to tell me a side of the ball that you were most sure about, I think it would be the offense. Bring him back, Carson Beck. Bring him back a pretty solid amount of production. So the fact that the defense had the best day shouldn't be cause for concern for the offense. It should be more confidence for this defense that brings back only 55% of production from last year's team that I think was the best in the country, just wasn't able to stay healthy, but it is what it is. No woulda, shoulda, coulda. C.J. Allen at linebacker looks like he's got next in Athens. Really excited to see what he becomes. Played a little bit last year, had a big-time interception in this game. Dude's a ball player. K.J. Bolden, another new face, early enrollee. I thought he looked active in this game, which I was encouraged to see by a true freshman being able to stick his nose in there. He was one of the standouts for our folks at Dogs HQ, our Georgia site under the On3 umbrella, and a membership there to get even more intel and more depth of analysis from this game. Michael Williams, to me, man, he stole the show. Michael Williams, the way that he was active, not just in trying to apply pressure to the to the quarterback, but also his ability to disrupt the pass game and getting those big mitts up in the passing lanes. Dude had interception. Like, the way he's going to be for Georgia this year, I wholeheartedly believe he's always been, I think, someone that Georgia fans have felt is a, a player for them and in a lot of ways been a star for them at different points. I think he's going to be a household name nationally. Like if you don't know Michael Williams, you're an average college football fan, that's going to change here in about, a, you know, the next six to seven months. I, I truly, truly believe that. Didn't even get to see him go into full attack mode because of the fact that it's a spring game, because of the fact that you can't actually hit the quarterback. Got to see him line up in different stances was encouraging to me. The fact that he could drop into coverage if he had to from that two-point stance. The fact that he is putting his hand in the ground, like that's just going to make him that much more dynamic in this defense and make it that much more of a headache for opposing offenses. Unfortunately, it was the Georgia offense today, but again, I don't think you have an overwhelmingly overwhelmingly amount of uh, high concern there when it comes to that Georgia, Georgia offense. Uh, here's the thing I love about Michael Williams. Yes, he played a great game in the G-Day, but the way he talked about his defense and the standard they have in Athens, to me, was the most encouraging thing of the entire day. Talking about we have a certain standard, and I need to bring these young guys along the way that I was brought along when I was here in Georgia early on, when I was a young buck, and the the older guys that told me about this standard here and set that thermostat really high. That matters. I think in a lot of ways that's what makes Georgia different than anywhere else in the country is the fact they are so intense and so next level about their internal standard. When you have the internal standard, way up here set to 110, that makes everything else externally kind of fall into place. Like, people talk about that spring game yesterday within that locker room is calling it the easiest practice of spring for Georgia. They're not kidding. These dudes have been beating the heck out of each other for the last 14 practices, been pushing the envelope, getting a ton of reps. Yesterday, it was easier because of what they've done during the spring. And Michael Williams understands that now. That standard, defensively, is what sets us apart. Yes, we got a ton of five stars. That's true. No, I mean, no, no doubt about it. But seeing him be a tone setter, that was encouraging to me because that means that that's that Georgia, that Georgia X factor is not going anywhere. Carson Beck offensively, 
didn't have a perfect day, but going back to what, what I just said, like a spring game does not define your entire spring ball time. It doesn't mean he had a bad spring. He didn't have a bad game yesterday. I mean, I think that final drive where he threw a dime rock to Dom Lovett to tie the game while on that final drive in crunch time, like tells you everything that you need to know about him. If you needed a reminder about who number 15 is, that dude who completed 70% of his passes last year, and I think is going to even take another step this year. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. The depth of weapons that they have at the pass catcher spots was really encouraging to me. Colby Young transfers in from Miami, and Aaron Ruger tried to talk to Kirby Smart during the broadcast yesterday and say, yeah, you hit home run on Colby Young. And Kirby Smart's like, home run, man. I'm not I haven't calling him a home run just yet. Okay, even with that being said, had a nice little 50-50 t- uh, touchdown catch. And if they add that 50-50 ball to the bag for Georgia and that becomes a thing that they can do in the red zone now consistently, look out. It's going to be a long day for everybody that has to play Georgia. Dom Lovett, we already mentioned him. He was the star of the day, over 100 yards receiving, had a catch that really belongs in Cirque du Soleil to tie the game up. He's going to be a dog, man. I would not be surprised if he led Georgia in receiving this upcoming season. A lot of production to replace from a Brock Bowers and a Lad McCaulkey. Dom Lovett will do a lot in helping make up for that. Also, Dylan Bell, a name that Georgia fans are really familiar with, a guy that Georgia fans are excited about, obviously, but the fact you can move him around so much. He played some tailback last year for Georgia. He's uh, he's a weapon and a half, and I think this is a year where he sees a little bit of a heavier dose of the football. Expect him to be a big impact player for them this year. I think when you look at what they have in the past game and seeing that come into its own and seeing some promising things yesterday from that past game. That, to me, makes Georgia offensively just a nightmare to stop because that's really the one thing that you're looking at as a Georgia fan. It's not, it wasn't a question mark ever, but it was something you're sort of waiting to see how it develops because when you look at what they have up front and in that backfield, I saw this. I'm sure every Georgia fan saw this. With, with that one-two punch between Trevor Etienne and Roderick Robinson, who looks like a creative player straight out of Madden, and what they have on that offensive line, those big boys, man, I feel extremely confident. I feel like it's almost a certainty that Georgia will have the physical edge and the depth to have that physical edge for as many games as it takes to win a national title. Period. Mike drop the end. They will still have that bully on the block mentality, and they will not just have that mentality, they'll have the ability within that personnel to be that enforcer for yet another season in Athens. It's not a surprise, but seeing just a glimpse of it in the spring game yesterday, and oh, by the way, Trevor Etienne can help you in the pass game too. First world problems. Georgia's got him. So, I mean, it is what it is. Came into this game thinking Georgia was the best team in the country. I thought that. Vegas thought that yesterday. They still think that, I believe. I haven't checked the updated odds, but if they have changed, they're wrong. Georgia, I believe, still has every opportunity and every ability and every asset to be the best team in the country. The talent level all around, as good as there is. Experience at quarterback in Carson Beck now. He's played on the big stages. He's played in the intense college game day atmosphere kind of games, all the pressure on him. Played in the SEC title game. There's a lot now that you can't account for physically that he has now from a experience level, from an acumen level that's going to pay dividends. Rising playmakers, we already mentioned, Dom Lovett, Colby Young. I mean, London Humphreys, if he gets rolling, that would be exciting for Georgia fans. The tempo they set on defense, we already talked about with Michael Williams. Like, you just, you kind of go down this list for Georgia. All the boxes that you need to have checked to win a national title, they've checked them. They're going to keep checking them. And also, we said this with other teams throughout this spring game reaction Sunday, like Georgia has now a wider margin to make that college football playoff and do some damage. Because I say this, man, like if Georgia has a chance to be healthy a year ago, I don't know who wants to play them in that four-team playoff. They're going to have a chance to be healthy one way or another from the SEC title game, should they get to play in it. I fully expect they will. Into that college football playoff setting, that 12-team setting. I don't know who wants to play Georgia with that kind of a runway. And then also the fact that Georgia could drop a game, could drop two games, depending on how they look and depending on who they're against, still should feel pretty comfortable about making that 12-team field. Georgia does a great job of refocusing whenever they lose the game. Like, I don't think we've seen Georgia, in recent memory at least, none that come to mind off the top of the head, where they have a loss and then have a healthy team the next week 
and they crumble again. Like Georgia, they usually get revitalized. It's kind of like an ice bath for them whenever they lose a the game. It refocuses them, clears the senses, and they go do they go do Georgia things. The Kirby Smart intensity within this team still very evident. We saw it in the spring game, and I can't wait to watch them in the fall, man. Because I mean, this is the team that really has something to prove. Kirby Smart over the course of the last couple of years. When they were winning national championships, he had to kind of manufacture the, well, hey, you're being overlooked. People are picking you to go 7-5. and five. I don't know if that was ever really a thing that was said, but God bless him if he got that team to believe it. They didn't win the national title last year. This is a team and a quarterback in Carson Beck that came back that knows that, that understands that, and that wants to capture themselves in the national championship. Carson Beck wants to get his own national title. I believe he said that to teammates. They're going to have a chance. They're going to have more than a chance to get that done in 2024. So Georgia had their G-Day. Love seeing 11-on-11 11 11 football. The vibes are high in Athens, as they should be, as your vibes should be with any spring season you get to experience for your football team. It'll be a lot of fun. God bless whoever has to play Georgia in that college football playoff format. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Make sure you're subscribed. We're going to keep this party rolling. See y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.